So we've got to the point now where we've got our shape moving across the screen, which is a, a pretty good start. The only issue we've got at the moment is if the shape goes off the left hand side, it will just keep going forever and it will never stop. Or maybe I should demo that just by speeding up this process even more, just so you can see it in action. So if I um, run this now, you'll notice that the shape will move across the screen. And when it gets to the other side, it goes off the screen and it's continuously being drawn further and further away from where we want it to be. So what we'd actually like it to do is maybe appear back over the other side so it keeps going round. So how could we do that? Well, why don't we just say, after all this has happened, if the x position of the shape, so if tube x, which is how far along it's being drawn, is, let's say, less than 0, and we'll see a little problem with this in a minute. So if it's less than 0, then... So if the shape moves across here, bearing in mind the zero point would be over here, if the shape moves across here and that x position gets just past zero, then we'd like it to maybe appear back over the other side of the graphics window. So then we would like to shapes dot, or in fact we don't need to move the shape, that was a bad idea of mine, why don't we just change the value of tube x to be so it'd be over the other side of the screen again. So I can just set tube x and make that equal to the other side of the screen, which we've already got stored in a variable, which is just the graphics window width. And sure enough, now it should appear over the other side every time it touches this side. So let's just test that out. Ah, hit some error messages. Uh, so if we just scroll down a little bit. Uh, what we've seen here is that it says it expected an end while Expected an end if and an end while it seems to be getting pretty grumpy. It is simply that with small basic, we need to end our if statements. So I just end my if in there. So let's go and run that code. And hopefully, that will fly across the other side and we should see it appear back over and start to come across again. See if we see any errors. Well, that was pretty good. It did what we wanted it to do. The only thing I don't like is that at the moment our tube is coming off the left hand side, is not coming off the left hand side of the screen, it's going before that. Now we're telling it to go back there when it's gone, just touches the left hand side. Bearing in mind our rectangle's left, top left corner is the point at which this is being drawn, we actually need it to go beyond zero. So when tube x is smaller than zero plus the width of our tube, and we've already got that stored, tube w, I think we called it, because that way it'll need to be beyond whatever zero, wherever zero is, plus the width of the tube, which means that hopefully the tube will have to be out of the way as well. Um, and if we run that, hopefully we'll see that. So it's at this top corner point, which we're plotting. So now it's got to be past the zero point and the width of the tube. Ah, we've got another small problem here. It seems to be actually jumping even earlier on. So what we probably needed to do in here was to say, well, no, we don't want to add the tube width. We want to take away the tube width. When it's smaller than zero, take away that width so that it's right off the screen, not back into the screen. And I think we'll find that that will solve our problem um, completely. Perfect.